Hello everyone. Welcome to episode one of Human Remains. Chapter one. The sun glared at her from the horizon, half concealed by the twisted remains of a high rise. The sky shone with dazzling colors that belied the savage nature of her surroundings. The golden rays of the setting sun gave her skin a complexion that matched that light. The ruins of what was once a peaceful city spread out in all directions before her. Each building now stood on cracked foundations. Both weather and human activity damaged each wall. Not a single home was without damage and rarely held residence. Each window once held a person behind it, living their lives peacefully and without fear of their surroundings. Now there were only shadows of what was once there. Shards of glass were littered on the roads, and in the front yards of every building, and each shard was sparkling in the twilight of the evening as sunlight re reflected on them. Each crumbling piece of cement had once been a wall, a road, or a sidewalk that the citizens all took for granted as they walked along it. They would have worshipped that cement if, as if it was a golden idol if they knew what would have happened to this peaceful, quiet city. The roads had no cars that eternally moved from one destination to the other, the few that lay before her were pointing in random directions, and some were even flipped over. There were even those that appeared to have been scavenged for various parts long ago. Just like the houses, not a single pane of glass had survived the onslaught that occurred long ago. Those houses once held loving families, but now they only held dust and wreckage. The only thing that would greet you if you knocked on the door would be the shadows of the past, if there had even been a door to knock on. Ceilings had collapsed, and roofing materials would fall off, even if a light breeze hit it. Her clothes were in good condition in comparison to the shadows of chaos around her, and she usually did her best to repair any wear and tear that would occur. She wore a green shirt that was missing its right sleeve. The other sleeve hung just past her wrist and widened to encircle the hand without constricting it. She wore a pair of blue jeans that had faded, making the obvious repairs she had made stick out like a sore thumb. Her crimson hair brushed softly against her shoulders as the gentle gust of wind passed her by. Her jeans were like gold when compared to how rare such a good piece of clothing had become over the horrifying year. The jerry can in her hand hadn't held the contents it was meant for for about a year now. She had washed it out when she found it in an abandoned car shortly after the incident. Now she used it to carry water from the nearby river. The only reason people are capable of surviving in this wasteland was this. The weight of the water comforted her, as if to ensure her survival for another day or two. She thought back to the devastation, and the week afterwards when people waited with bated breath for food and water from the army and other organizations. Those people were the first to perish. After that, some people lost hope, while many took advantage of this incident to pillage and rape as they saw fit. Their targets were the next to perish. After the first month, a good half of the city's population was gone, and what was left was struggling to survive. Humans should have known that a city could never support all of its population if their outside sources of food were cut. With survival of the fittest, being the one true law, humans were reduced to what they were, and what they once were, oh so long ago. The vermin-like remains of humanity became solitary, and had returned to their predatory roots. She had never seen more than four humans in one spot, and knew that any group bigger than that would fall prey to greed, hatred, and jealousy. Once again, survival of the fittest, that's all it boiled down to. The weak died from starvation, or were killed by those who were stronger. Once again, survival of the fittest became the only true law in this wasteland. To be solitary increased one's chances of survival, but it never guaranteed it. She had to be on guard and ready to either run or defend herself if the need arose. She used to ponder about why no help ever came. She never came to any true conclusions as to why, and simply let the question slip from her mind. 
She had soon forgotten all the stigmas of society, and followed that one true law that humans had almost forgotten until a disaster struck them. She remembered how tame and docile the creatures called humans had been up until this point. The soft lives that had, that had led, they had led, became their doom when they needed the one thing they thought they would never have to use again, their bestial instincts. Those instincts were the only thing that kept people alive in this jungle of cracked cement and twisted metal. It was one of the things that kept her alive during this whole year. She passed by a large truck. Paint could be seen flaking off its metal frame. All the windows were shattered and shards were scattered in front of her path. The front of the truck was wrapped around a large tree that was in front of another quiet and empty house. From the year of growth, it has appeared as if the radiator was starting to be absorbed into the tree's trunk. Emily walked past the shards of razor-like glass and stopped as her eyes glimpsed the back tire of the truck had remained undamaged and partially inflated. She would admit that she was surprised to see such a sight, since it had been the only undamaged tire she had seen in the past few months. Nature was beginning to take back the land, even if it would take an immeasurable amount of time to completely erase the scar that was humanity. Only after a year of growth, weeds already poked out of cracks in the cement, and flowers grew in places where only garbage would have been previously. Even the animals were returning to the land that, had, that was once rightfully theirs. She looked up at the horizon to see that the sun was almost completely out of sight now. The last few rays of golden light gave the wasteland a look of an ancient golden city, one that could rival the brilliance of El Dorado itself. That light fooled the eyes into thinking that this city was pure and peaceful. Those foolish enough to believe that would have died very quickly. The unnaturally peaceful sight was interrupted by the sound of glass being crushed by a footstep. Her eyes darted fiercely around her as her survival instincts kicked in, and she turned her head to see the savage with her cold and calculating eyes. A knife. Yes, I won't have a problem with him. That was the first and only thought going through her mind as she examined the man. He was quite muscular, but seemed to be malnourished. He had a knife in his right hand, and it was the only weapon he was carrying. His clothes were ragged from poor care, and his dress pants were ripped in many places. Hey you, give me that water, he ordered, holding the knife in front of himself. She could feel her hate rising and hearing his words. Hate was a common emotion in the city, even before the disaster. Although her hatred was born out of more primordial sources, than anything a pampered human could think of in their arrogance. She chuckled and let her three-foot-long copper pipe slide out of her one good sleeve. He must have thought that she would hand over that, over that life-giving water out of intimidation. He was sadly mistaken, mistaken and would regret such thoughts if he lasted long enough. She then spoke with hatred dripping from each word, Survival of the fittest. If you can take it from me, then you can have it. The man seemed to falter for a brief second, as if her words cut into him, like that very knife he was holding. She stood there, waiting for him to make him the first move. He gathered up enough courage to fight and lunged for her with his knife. But she had already seen it coming, and jumped back. She brought the pipe over her head, and it came crashing down on the man's right shoulder causing him to drop his knife. He bent down in, in response to the pain, but didn't realize he'd left himself open to attack, and at that split second was enough time for her to react. Her pipe swung against the right side of the man's head, and the force of the blow slammed him against the side of the truck. A subtle smirk crossed her face as the man's body slumped down, and she bent over to ensure that he was dead.